Hey everyone, this is um, QSOC. Mixed doubles finals come in. Uh, we have two very formidable opponents. Lockie's team uh, paired with Jacqueline and Taz who's paired with Nilla. And uh, I'm your other commentator, I'm Jason, uh, currently second year uh, lecture engineering and uh, I'll be nice and commentating today. Yeah, and this is Nicholas, uh, also commentating. Um, so the lag just, hap uh, just finished actually, Taz won that so they're about to break. This is a squash doubles Oi! event. Um, oh, someone just tripped over a cord. <laughs> <laughs> uh, this is a squash doubles event so players need to alternate shots. Um, and it is winner breaks. So here we see Taz just setting up the magic rack, getting ready to break. It's a race to five, which means first first uh, team to get five frames wins. Um, yeah, well, it should be a great final. Yeah, just it's going to be a really exciting one, especially um, seeing with a player with that much experience as Loki, and, um, and especially as a newcomer, but has a lot of experience outside of QSOC um, with uh, Taz. And it'll be definitely a very exciting match to play. Uh, before they get on the way, really quickly introducing the players. So Neil is a third year software engineering student. Um, we got Taz, who's a fourth year petroleum engineering, and then Lucky, who's a third year commerce double degree, and also many may know the QSOC president, and then Jacqueline's a third year psych. So big break from Taz. The 14, oh, goes in. So, that's a really good break actually, very good spread. Um, Nilla, about to take the stripes. Ooh, missed a pretty straightforward shot. I think that's just the nerves kicking in a bit. But, that's okay, happens. Lucky is gonna go for stripes as well. Makes the... 12 ball, but kind of uh, hooked himself with position. I think Jacqueline's gonna have to come up with some ingenuity here to get out of this. Just a really quick shout out to um, the snooker comp as well. We ran two events simultaneously today. So this is the mixed doubles on the uh, American pool tables, but we also have a snooker event for those more interested in snooker. Um, I think the final for that is happening right now. Jacqueline's scratching there, I think she's trying to play a safety. Uh, very unfortunate, we'll see. Uh, Taz and Nilla, the first visitor to the table, what will they do? Jason just really quickly stepped out to take a phone call, so it'll just be me for, uh, for a bit. Two ball into the side, very nicely shot. And I think she is aiming for the four ball now. Rolls that into the corner, very nice. Great shot, very good uh, speed as well. And um, now Mataz is now looking for the orange four. Uh, Jason, who do you who do you favor to win this this final today? Yeah, but uh, even at the beginning, um, I would I was I was had a little bit of expectation that Loki would um, have a, a a strong seat in this game, but now looking that it was uh, actually Taz and Nala making to the finals, uh, it would actually be a very tough and close game. Um, but uh, as currently who I favor now, I, I would say at the moment Loki. But as again with Paul, the amount of unpredictable variables, um, it, it's bound to change. Uh, how about you, Nick? Um, honestly, I'm not too sure because, funnily enough, I lost to Taz and Nilla just, uh, just earlier in the semifinals. Um, they played really, really well, so it's very hard to say. I know Lockie and Jacqueline, they're both great players. Taz and Nilla showed that they're very good players today as well, so it's really up in the air. Yeah, it's definitely it's definitely going to be uh, anyone's game, um, especially at the opening game. Uh, the first game will definitely prove most vital uh, in building the momentum to win the finals. Taz going for the cut down the rail. It's 
fix that very, very convincingly. That was a very well done shot. Very tricky. Um, it might seem to be like a decently straight shot, but to get like such a straight shot uh, at such distance. And also we're playing a build, which the pockets are a bit smaller, therefore a bit harder to make shots in. He's got the 7 ball before the 8. I think he's looking for the... Yep, he's just pointing out the corner pocket. So he's going to try to play a longer shot. A bit hampered by the rail right now, so can't see all of the ball. Oh, it's going. Oh, just close. Just a bit short. Lucky in Jacqueline's turn at the table. Not really left with much options right now. Um, I think it's Jacqueline's shot. I think she's looking to shoot the 11. It's definitely the most straightforward shot, but position's not uh, not simple. Uh, cool thing to note, Jason, is um, like how much the players are talking between each other. Scotch doubles is a team event, so you know it's really important to communicate a lot with your partner. Yeah, so definitely. You can, see, you can see these two talking through the options. Yeah, definitely. It's more, um, as this is a uh, mixed doubles, um, especially uh, our mixed doubles comp, it's a team-based team, uh, team base, uh, game of April. Um, as, as only one person can do so much, you may be able to get position, pop most balls, but you also have to rely on your partner. And to, to play effectively, you'll require a lot of communication, and they execute a very nice safety. Um, kudos to Jacqueline. Uh, but yeah, just it's all about communication um, in this Scotch double game, and um, the team with the best communication and uh, able to communicate prop uh, efficiently will be winning the finals uh, today. Um, that was a good example of a safety play that Lockie and Jacqueline came up with. Um, I watched a couple of their games. I think they're going to be using that a lot in this final. Uh, rely on safeties because they can't always get the right shots because of that you know, more, more often than not they can come back to the table with a much easier option uh, we'll see how Nila deals with this though plays a 7 with a really nice safety as well so just putting that cue ball back on the short rail very good two way as well um, in case that you can't pot it uh, a two way shot that uh, leaves the opponent with a hard shot after you miss will be the most ideal um, deal shot you want to leave your opponent Corner, great shot by Lockie. Funny looking corner, Jason. It is a very funny corner. <laughs> um, yeah, that was a wonderful pot, Lockie. Um, I think he's looking at another safety. Pointing at the 15 ball. There's no obvious pocket that that goes into, so yeah, I think it'll be a safety coming out from Jackman. Possibly get the ball um, in the line of seven and, and nine um, in order to block the uh, path of the seven um, to the uh, the middle pocket. Also, I think what they're thinking is that the fifteen ball right now doesn't really go into many pockets. So I think they're thinking of moving it uh, somewhere more accessible as well, along with the safety. Wonderfully executed. Uh, I'm not sure if Taz can see the ball. Looks like he can, so I think he's going to go for the block. A little bit of overshoot, but it was a very good idea to get behind the 8. If it was executed perfectly, uh, that would have defined uh, this rack. That was very close. 9 ball, oh it rolls in. Which is very unfortunate. Um, if it stayed it out of the pocket, Lucky and Jackson, they would have had an easy shot to start off with. So left with a lot more decisions now. He's looking at the 15. 
Not too sure if the cue ball goes between the five, 7 and the 8 uh, with the right angle for the 15. If it does, it's a, it's a pretty simple positional shot to get on the 10 afterwards. Which shot would you take, Nick? The 10 on the 15? Um, if the 15 goes, I would have taken the 15. Looks like, like he's going for the 10. Going for the 10. Very thin cut. Maybe he tried to block the pucker with the 10, or maybe he's just going for the cut. We'll see how they clear this out. Oh, Nila misses on the 7 ball. So now, a little bit of a situation going on in the corner there with um, the 10 and the 7. Yeah, there's a little cluster of balls there. Um, ball, uh, each solid replacing uh, stripes, and stripes are playing solid, uh, blocking the pocket now. So it'll be a matter of who can um, pop the balls and get it out of the um, the blockage. Yeah. So we're also seeing like the masterminds behind each team uh, going at it here. I think uh, Taz is the one that makes the more strategic decisions, uh, as he has more experience. And same goes for Lockie. As you can see, he's like measuring up the angles for Jackman and everything. Yep, as we see here, a lot of a lot of discussion, a lot of communication, um, especially even if it's your turn, uh, you would li uh, like to talk with your partner and decide on what's the best options because they may see in a different perspective and a different um, opinion on how the shot will turn out and um, uh, how they could win the game. So, how's your game against um, Taz, Nick, today? Uh, um. Looking back at it now, I didn't play them best. Um, we, we we let a couple of crucial frames go. So the scoreline was I think five one at the end. Oh, five one. Um, yeah, I think the game itself wasn't as close. Uh, it was closer than the score indicated, but still they they, they played very well. Um, funny enough, they broke and ran in the oh, very last wow. frame to beat us. <laughs> so it's quite a rare sight, especially in our uh, mixed doubles pops sky scotch. Yeah, uh, having a break and run in the scotch is very respectable. Very, uh, a very good feat to reach, uh, especially from a player from his experience. Playing for the seven now. But yeah, even with the evidence from Nick's game, um, I dare say uh, Taz is on a roll. And oh, it's hanging by a hair. Oh. It's nearly fallen to the pocket, but it's hanging on by a hair on the pocket. That was a very tough shot. Again, very deceiving. Because I think Taz was going to was trying to get the cue ball out of the way, um, so he's trying to do some something more fancy, and because of that, he missed. And for the pot, he Lucky misses. misses the ten. Wow! So a couple of mistakes coming out from both teams. Um, but I think it is a very indicative though, so it's going to be a very tense and close final. Yes, definitely. Yeah, we could see the nerves, especially between two teams, as this is the finals. But it will be um, definitely a lot more tense uh, coming up as well. Great shot from Nala and leaving a uh, somewhat makeable shot to Taz. Yep, so Taz with the first opportunity on the eight ball. Just double checking his angles. It's always great to be thorough as a pool player. As always, you always want to be 100% uh, confident once you go on the shot. And let's see how he goes. He fires. And he pops the first shot. ball and he wins the first rack. Yep, so. Wonderful shot from Taz. Um, he's going to be racking up the balls. So, this is a alternating break format, which means both players in the team need to break. Um, do you prefer more of an alternate break or a winner break uh, system, Nick? Especially during uh, a scotch double oh, game. Oh, sorry. So what I meant was, um, it's a winner's break, so whoever won, but uh, within the team, they have to. Oh switch yes, the yes, yes, yes. So I think it'll be Nilla's break coming up. We'll see how she breaks. Taz did break the very first frame, but wonderful spread, by the way. Yeah. Do you think that's more of a, a more fair way to counteract the um, the players and the skills that it's also a break between the the partners? Yeah, I think it's yeah, I think it's a great system. Um, it means that like if you have a team, a bit of a more imbalanced team with like a, 
a more advanced player uh, paired with a in lesser lesser experienced player, it means that they can't always like break and get like that perfect frame. Um, it keeps the game so definitely more exciting. So near this break there, still pretty good spread. It wasn't as powerful as Taz's, but. And from this angle, it is stuck behind a 10, so it might limit a lot of options that Lockheed wants to take. It's playing for a 9 ball, I believe. Oh no, sorry, that was a 2 ball. Uh, very deceptive from where we're sitting over here. <laughs> yeah, definitely on the table and uh, from this, this parallel height, it is very hard to see sometimes. <laughs> so forgive us if we uh, misread any shots <laughs> that they take. So Jason, uh, did you play any pool today? <laughs> Alright, so long story short, yes, um, I was supposed to, I signed up for the snooker comp for today, uh, but currently this turn I am taking, oh no, that I believe is a miscue. That was a miscue. Um, luckily, like like you said, not a foul because no balls have been allocated yet. Yep, but as a continuous story, yeah, I was supposed to play snooker, but um, Yesterday I had a long night after work and I, I basically slept at 9 instead of grinding out my assignment, short report. And um, yes, yeah, so I woke up at around 4am, 4 uh, 4 woke up and um, yeah, nearly got, was really shocked and I was like, oh no, I have to finish my assignment. Tried doing it towards 6 o'clock, couldn't do it, slept and uh, woke up and I had to finish my assignment before I could come and uh, commentate here today. Great shot for Jacqueline. He's gonna take the three, go one rail, maybe two rails out for the one ball. The two. Looks like it'll be the one ball. Yeah. Jacqueline's going to be a bit hampered by that cluster, uh, by the eights. That eight does ball. look a bit tough. We would have to overarch over the uh, cluster of balls to reach the one. Um, we had Leon making a surprise appearance in the background there. I don't know if many of you caught that. Is he still in university right now? Leon is still in university, so he still can play in Kisak events. That being said, he has won a lot of them already, <laughs> so it's disallowed for them from those ones. Great for those shot. who don't know, Kisok is a semi-handicap based uh, society. Um, so what that means is players that are too good, we prevent from playing. And also players that have won the competition in the past, we don't let allow to play for that competition again. Yep, that definitely creates a more a balanced environment that everyone has a turn and uh, everyone doesn't just get run out by the best players on the QSOC and they don't have to dominate all the leaderboards all the time. And it's really good seeing the, the cycle of new players coming in and uh, leaving the society. Um, you know, there's a, so many fresh faces every year that we see. Um, I did join QSOC three years ago, so I'm a third year as well, uh, along with Lockie and Jacqueline. And, um, you know, seeing the, the kind of old guard uh, like you know give their place to the newer people and then the newer people are becoming like the more experienced than the ones that are like uh, Have a more leadership role in the society. It's great to see. Yeah, definitely a lot of uh, change of different faces are very exciting to see um, And especially with all the different years coming into university um, It creates a lot of fresh uh, fresh blood and fresh ideas onto the society So with your experience um, these three years, so has QSOC changed a lot within these three years? Um I wouldn't say it's changed much, like the, the core values is definitely still the same. We are just a society about playing pool and having fun. Um, but I think the biggest change is uh, a couple of the logistics, um, like some of the, I guess, uh, like leadership has uh, changed and altered. So we have a couple of different roles for people who are looking to sign up for QSOC next year, maybe as an executive different roles um, be on the lookout for that although that is quite still quite far away Jacqueline down for the shot I think she's going for the two yep for the corner top. The side, I think. yes from the side she should oh, into, oh. The corner. into the corner needs to watch out oh no almost made it very close shot um, stripes is a bit uh, worse in this situation if you see the 15 ball and the 11 ball clustered around with the 8. So Nilla and Taz are going to have to come up with a solution for that. Yes, they definitely have to take time off to think as well to how to uh, cannon and break out the cluster of balls to provide them an easier rack for, uh, down the line. 
Just, I can't see the angle right now, but I think if he played the 9 ball right now, it would be a really good angle for the cannon. But I think he's opted against that. Playing for the. I think that's the 12. I think they're going for the so 9 then, shot now. Playing for the 9 now. It is quite far fetched, so they're gonna have to, might have to use rest. <laughs> Once again, I want to reiterate that our events are very um, beginner friendly. Uh, all skill levels are welcome, except for those who are too good. <laughs> uh, are, you, are you scared of them running um, you out, Nick? Ke Kevin Alexander, <laughs> if you're out oh. there listening. Um, Nick has probably lost a bit too much uh, money on these races, <laughs> and uh, maybe a bit, oh, a very, very violent shot from Lockie. Yeah, very ambitious there, playing the uh, follow. Now with the A ball close to the corner pocket, um, it does provide a little bit of danger to the uh, the players in case that uh, ricochets the A ball into the pocket and uh, causes a loss of frame. Yep, definitely. Excellent shot on the nine ball there. Two balls at once. Ooh, what a shot! Thirteen ball sneaks in. Um, don't know if that's a good thing or not, but uh, Nila definitely has a shot on the ten. Can probably follow it over for the fourteen, just like that. Wonderfully struck. struck. Ooh, is it gonna roll Ooh, behind the seven? Is. I think it is. It looks behind, stuck behind the seven. So the shot, uh, that shot would be blocked. That's very unfortunate. Um, I think there's a, maybe a little bit of table roll. Also, uh, she did strike that a tiny bit too hard. I think on the 15 now, into the same pocket. Taz just measuring it up. Sorry, I think he was playing for the 15 in the corner next to the 8 ball. Um, missed that. Luckily he didn't scratch, so left Lucky and Jackson with a very tough shot now. It looks like it's uh, hooked on the corner, so uh, I feel like there's definitely a lot of uh, options uh, crossed out. Yep, as again, we see a lot of discussion, and uh, that's definitely a good sign of uh, teamwork. <laughs> Playing for the 7 ball, down the rail. Bit soft, but I think that's gonna touch the end rail. And if that's the case, that would be a foul? Um, I think the cue ball hit the long rail. Oh yes, it so did. Yeah. I don't think it's a foul. For those who don't know, um, there is a rule where one of any of the balls will have to touch a rail um, after the contact has been made. So that prevents people from hitting shots too lightly and uh, getting away with like a safety, kind of an unfair shot, I guess. And then um, an undisgruntled uh, lucky is uh, faced with the balls uh, a fifth after uh, five balls stuck with fourteen. Um, definitely not favourable here. Place a six into the side. Very well done. Um, that's a very tough shot actually. The middle pockets are notoriously difficult if you're playing with higher speed. So, Lucky you know, played that with like decent assertiveness, which is definitely not easy. Um, requires pinpoint accuracy. Jackson's going to take the seven now. Yeah, definitely. Even with these tables, the diamond tables, the uh, pockets are smaller compared to the ones at the city, and um, it definitely levers are uh, all oh, as again you know, described. Good example of the pocket. small pockets there. Uh, I definitely would have dropped in the city. And it's uh, a less margin of error, so you don't get as much um, uh, flexibility and chance to get into the pocket. Um, from your personal experience, Nick, would you prefer the tables that build the diamond tables or the ones at city? Um. I, oh, the tables at City make me feel pretty good when they play. <laughs> because, <A lot> of <laughs> ego. <laughs> yeah, it just makes like everything feels very good. Safety there from Taz. 
but I believe Lockie sees and I, seven, yeah. yeah, he does not block, unfortunately. Uh, he did give him distance, so it's going to be a bit more difficult for position. As you can see, Lockie's thinking of how to break up this, uh, the five ball. Or maybe he's just playing the safe here. I think that's the case. Plays the safe. At least a 14 on. Don't think he's caught that five ball into the middle pocket. Uh, another small niche rule is that we have to call pockets, so on a shot like that, he didn't intend to play the five ball into the middle, so it's not his turn still. And then, uh, even I, I prefer that rule as well, because that definitely, uh, pre it definitely prevents a lot of flukes and uh, makes the games more interesting instead of, uh, it's a game of skill instead of a game of luck. Nilo with an amazing part there. Will the cue ball run too far? Oh. No, it leaves Taz for the 11 ball into the corner. That looks, like, right. looks like a great opportunity to uh, take the, uh, another lead of this rack. Oh, he's missed that though, unfortunately. Um, bump the two, I think that still goes into the middle. So we've got two essentially pocket hangers for Team Loki before the 8 ball. Let's see, let's see how they choose to negotiate this rack. As you were saying earlier, Jason, with the, the different pockets and uh, the different tables. Yeah, um, I, I like city tables. They're, they're very fun to play on. You can make a lot more absurd shots. Um, and also, it's a very double-edged sword because the cue ball does more likely go into the pocket at city. Yeah, it's definitely even with the bigger uh, pocket, the double-edged sword and the um, the bad part is that the white ball can also make it to the pocket. And often that could cause a loss of frame, especially if it's on the, the white and the black. Uh, that being said, the, the pockets, oh, sorry, the table quality at the at Bell, the diamond tables, they are better than the ones in the city. So, like, I, I prefer both. I like playing at both venues. You know, pool's just an enjoyable game, so, you know, I enjoy pool on either table. Jack plays. Oh, it might be a scratch. It scratches. It's unfortunate. That was very unlucky. It kissed the 15 there, oh, which led to a scratch. Now it's up to Taz and Nala to take the initiative and they might even pot ace, uh, a have a 2 nil lead. I'm wondering if the 11 ball goes past. It's looking like it does. Uh, but with ball in hand, the 11 ball could go into the, any of the other 5 pockets. So We'll see how they choose to do this. Yeah, Taz just pointed out the other pocket there. Oh, he's pointed out the 15 ball pocket. And uh, uh, 11 ball into, into the middle. middle. Oh, go okay. shot. She's left him on the right side, so it'll be hmm. natural position to get to the ball. Should just be one rail. Oh, but like I said, I'm not sure if it was passing the, the two ball there. That was quite unfortunate. Um, maybe he took it a bit too quick. We'll see what Lucky does. There's also in a game of pool, there's a lot of thought process. It's not just you pot one ball and you go ahead. It's also the sh what comes afterwards. So where you get position on the ball is also very important for the factor of winning the game. He's tried to draw that back. Two rails for the eight. And he's missed it. Didn't leave Nilla with uh, too much though. Not sure if the 11 goes in the side. If it does, uh, it would have to be a pretty amazing pot. And it goes. And she's clear of the two ball. Oh no, she's not. Um, um it does seem that uh, Nala has left Taz uh, behind uh, behind the two, and uh, eight ball is now blocked by the two. So it'll be either a kick or possibly even a long distance jump in hopes to get the eight ball into the pocket. You know what? I would really like to see someone go eight ball in this game. <laughs> I'm not sure if Taz has a jump cube, I know Lucky definitely does and has experience jumping. Uh, yeah. Yeah, jumping definitely adds another level to the game and definitely makes it more exciting and um, thrilling to see a player's uh, so have different the one -round kick. Makes contact, so no foul there. Has he left Shackton a shot in the two? I, I think that's looking pretty straight for me, J Jason. How, how, how does it look for you? Yeah, it is, uh, it's definitely makeable on the corner corner shot. Um, and also, even possibly, maybe a middle pocket. But as again, um, they'll be able to take an account on where the ball will land afterwards uh, to make a shot for the eight ball. 
So I just got up and had a look. It's it's very straight. Um, we'll see if she opts to try to do a bit more with the cue ball to get position, or she's just gonna stop it and have Lucky take the harder shot. Ooh, she's maybe hit it a bit. Yeah, and sometimes the the horrible parts of our. Um, straight shots is sometimes maybe adding unintentional spin can cause the ball to either overcut or undercut and that may cause problems down the line. Again a tough shot on the A4. Quite a bit of distance as well um, from to the blackboard to the corner pocket so let's see how Nala performs on the shot. Is scratch Ooh, the cue ball. The cue ball came awfully close to the um, the corner pocket, but luckily it does not um, scratch. Let's see how Lucky takes his shot. I think it's checking if the corner of the pocket, the jaw of the pocket, is yeah. in the way of the two ball. If that is very unfortunate. Possibly, yeah. If it's corner, uh, if it's knocked on a uh, corner, it might, it's going to prove a very difficult shot, even for a uh, play, uh, player like Lucky. Okay, decides to unload. <laughs> Kisses the eight, still leaves position. Very well done, very well, good job. What a player, <laughs> what a player. A little bit exhibition y, but that's just the type of player Lucky is. <laughs> yeah, he definitely likes a player, but I've read a very. Um, not sure when the recording cut there, but we're back. Uh, here's one nil so far, and Jacqueline's taking the eight ball to tie it up. And she makes it, no oh, scratch. Yeah, no, scratch, yeah. no scratch. So that now is one one. Uh, they're both uh, even on the um, uh, this game. Uh, I believe it's a race to five. Uh, yep, it's a race to five. Jacqueline's just wrapping up. It's their first, their team's first chance at breaking. So we'll see how good. Lucky or Jacqueline's breakers. Oh yeah, and another question about personal preference. Um, what should you prefer uh, after playing with both um, carbon and wooden cues uh, shafts? Which one would you prefer, and which one makes you feel like you're playing better? Oh, very interesting question, Jason. Um, as some people may know, I do have a carbon shaft, just like how Lucky and has as well. Oh, we have both players, uh, but sorry, one player from each team having a carbon cue, and one player from each team having a wood cue today. Ooh. Um, but yeah, back to the question, playing with carbon is definitely a lot lower maintenance, I don't really have to clean my key as much. Great break from Lucky. Oh, uh, very great break. Let's see how many ball pockets. Four ball, no. Oh no, it hangs on so the corner. So it's a dry break, uh, with many options from Taz. Um, Taz has many options, so we'll see what he opts for. Um, carbon or wood? I actually prefer the feeling of wood shafts. Uh, back she when said. I used to have, <laughs> <laughs> back when I used to have a wood, wooden shaft. Um, but that being said, um, I have a Qtex Energy with a changed tip. Um, it does replicate the wooden feel the most out of all the carbon ones I've tried. So I think I've definitely chosen like the, the right shaft for me. Um, and like I just can't live without the like the ease of having carbon and like being able to just leave it in my bag in the car and not have to worry about too much about uh, temperature and humidity damage yes another uh, another positive um uh, a very good point about uh, carbon cues is that they, don't, uh, they tend not to warp and um oh, that's what wood cues sometimes i'm known for they sometimes warp and may uh, bend shape that if you roll the cue on the table it will sometimes bounce and that may cause uh, miscues or even uh, Ooh, sorry to interrupt locking over Massey it is <laughs> he's not bound but he's epically failed um, as they say that's gonna leave a mark 
we'll see what <laughs> we'll see what Jacket does <laughs> to salvage the situation. Yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> so, you're, you're saying Jason? But yeah, no, definitely. Um, yeah, definitely, it is uh, quite a quite a change from wooden and um, carbon cues, uh, especially with a non warping. Would you say that you improve in your prospects of racing in uh, with a carbon cue and your skill wise? Yeah, I'd say it's mainly play better um, since I'm creating. That's also might, might just be because uh, I've improved as a player. Um, I'm surprised your league team wasn't uh, BBC, the big black cues. <laughs> Because uh, Charles didn't have a carbon, so ah, unfortunately we couldn't be on the left. Back to actual cool commentary. <laughs> well, seems like we're still deciding, so we'll talk a bit more about cues. Sure. <laughs> uh, Jason, I think you own a wood cue, wood draft. Um, Yes, yeah, so um, so when I began we when I began, began playing pool, I had plays the double, kisses off the six and goes in. She has to call the right pocket, so and that makes the shots. And Taz is putting his hands up in the apology, but uh, he continues with the next shot. So we'll call it uh, intentional. Intentional, all planned, all planned. For the recording, it's intentional. <laughs> um, lining up the tall ball now. <laughs> Oh yeah, so uh, back to back to the kids. Yeah, I, so I started off as a Fury, and um, I gradually went on to a Lacoste queue, and um, they're both wooden queues. And I definitely felt that having a new queue um, helped me improve a lot, um, especially with a slim shaft that I got used to. And yeah, um, yeah definitely improved a lot of my skills. It's meant to kick. Will he make a rail contact? Oh, I think he's made contact on the first pass. Uh, just very slightly, so lucky just taking the shot. On the six ball, no, Jacqueline's on the six ball. You can also take the seven or the two ball, but it's gonna be a bit. She's gonna be a bit hampered. It does look like a straight shot into a pocket, but as with most danger, um, if you accidentally had a bit of top spin, that white ball, cue ball, can possibly roll into the pocket and uh, give the opponent a ball in hand. Yeah, yeah. So pocket hanging is definitely nothing to snooze about. Um, you have to do as much thinking as you would for a normal pot. I think I'm very well aware of that. I lost many games <laughs> due to, due to uh, not really thinking about pocket hangers. Yeah, and just, uh, um, with our previous race, there was a time that you ran me out twice, but I still lost the game, unfortunately, because of the, um, the white ball scratch after making eight. It yeah. was quite unfortunate. Yeah, that happened. <laughs> but it was a very good race, um, regardless of that. Uh, for those who don't know, race is just what we call a, a, a I guess, a competitive game. Yeah, some, sometimes, um, especially with our familiar faces, uh, we tend to like to play each other um, on tables and we, what we like to do is something we call race for table and it's basically the uh, the two players play against each other to a certain uh, frame, so a race to five or race to seven and um, usually the uh, the more senior member uh, would give the uh, the junior member a head start and what that is is um, allows them to give a head start of for example 302 to race to five and that definitely bounces out a lot of the skill disparity and um, yeah so whoever ends up winning the table whoever ends up losing the, um, the race will pay for table and um, it's definitely a very good way to improve and um, get along and meet new people uh, new pool players yeah so some people ask like why don't you just um, you know pay for the table equally but I think you know, having the pressure of like you know paying for the table, it encourages new like better people to play. Oh, it, sorry, encourages people to play actually because they have a chance of playing for free. As we know, City Heroes, um, <laughs> while they are our sponsors, they they don't they're not uh, as cheap as they used to be. Uh, the tables I think are twenty two dollars per hour now. Well, uh, how much were they when you started playing? They were fourteen dollars an hour when I started playing. Oh wow! So inflation so, has really hit yep, um, quite really, high. It's really gone up. <laughs> And because of that, you know, it, it, it does like encourage people to play like competitively. Uh, essentially gamble, but I'd say it's more of a, like a gamble with good spirits type of thing because you're just having a total, like, competitive game. 
Yeah. And, and also the pressure um, does make you a better player, I think. Yeah, I definitely um, think that, you know, um, the prospects of winning or losing can inspire um, a player to play to the fullest and they uh, especially want to practice their skills for future competitions. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and especially something on the line for something as simple as, you know, paying for a table, which sometimes isn't cheap, uh, depending on uh, how, much, how long you play, um, can yeah, definitely inspire the um, player to play to the fullest extent and hopefully win the race. What was your most, ex table, uh, mo most expensive race from experience? My most expensive race? I'm not too sure. I have, I guess like my exp most expensive day would probably be when I raced Loki. Um, and he hilariously beat me twice, hill hill. Oh no. <laughs> so the first set, I think we played race to seven. He beat me hill hill, which means we played the most amount of frames and therefore the most expensive race. Yep, so 7 6, uh, lock his way. Yep, and then we played again. Um, you know, me thinking I could beat him <laughs> the second time. But second wind. Funnily enough, happened, the same thing happened. And then I believe I played someone else after. Shorter race to five, and I lost that as well. Oh, so that must have been a very expensive day for your, your bank account. <laughs> but th that being said, I've also had very cheap days. So, oh. <laughs> uh, you, know, it, you know, what goes around comes around. Yeah, definitely. And um, the best part about um, especially racing for table, it's not in a way like gambling or pokies that you don't really gain anything. But if you race for table and lose, you still gain experience and also any tips from the, uh, the opposing player that will give to you uh, to improve in your, your skills as a pool player. Yeah, yeah. We're all very f uh, friendly faces, if you know us. Um, not very much like the pool stereotype, or like the pub stereotype, I guess, where we're all like very angry, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> Definitely, there's a lot of stereotypes, especially in the um, the English pub uh, pub image that you know a lot of drunk tards playing pool together, having fun. Yeah. But yeah, um, yeah, us as a social society, especially at um, university, it's definitely a uh, very great way to meet new people, like-minded people who like playing pool, and especially making new friends. Because um, especially as a second year um, who joined subcom in first year, I definitely have met a lot of our people, uh, made new friends, and especially in subcommittee, we've been to countless road trips, and it's definitely a very memorable experience experience that um, adds on to university. Um, back to the actual game, it has been a nice shot on the 11 I believe, I didn't actually see the colour. Nilla's going for the 12, puts it in, and then they've got the 9 ball who's, which is hanging on the pocket, and the 13 into the middle, a bit of a tougher shot, has down for the 13. Is it going to roll it? I think it's going to roll it. Yep, rolls it in. Nice top spin, good action. And now he has position, position for the 10. Yeah, so... Actually, in the in the time that we were talking, um, Lockie's team did like pot many of the solid balls and there were a lot of straps on the table, but as you can see, if you play well with your partner, um, the balls can really disappear really quickly. Yeah, definitely team chemistry plays a very huge factor of, um, uh, in you know winning or possibly winning or losing. And that's a misses the 10 ball. It was a good attempt. Oh, it's a good attempt. Um, got position for the 14. Um, but it will be lucky back on the table for the 2 ball. I think it's rolls it in, top spin for the 8 ball in the middle. Position Perfect for position. Perfect position for Jacqueline. A lot less worries. Uh, just a stop shot for the eight ball. Hopefully no roll. <laughs> <laughs> um, fun question for you, Jason. Yes. After she makes it in. Hopefully. All right, the big shot. And it goes yep, in, congratulations. It in so now it's two ones well, with Lockie at the hill. Uh, I think it's Jackson's break now. Let's see how she breaks first time at the table. Breaking. Um, Jason, do you, are you aware of what's, what is known as eight ball anxiety? Or the, or the money ball anxiety. Money ball anxiety. Uh, so from just guessing from the name, um, I would presume that it's like when you're on the lot, you may run out all the balls, but you're on the last ball. And um, yeah, definitely. Um, yeah, sometimes even when that races, I definitely do get a lot of anxiety. A lot of anxiety um, when I'm on the last ball, eight ball, because anything could happen. Um, there were many times that I have, in fact, either missed the eight ball. Or even in worst case scenario, I have uh, pot the white ball and the eight ball at the same time, causing a loss of frame. And sometimes, even on the crucial moments, like if it's on the decider rack, um, that could cause cause a lot of um, yeah, post post frame depression. 
And um, yeah, a little bit of anxiety on it as well. So yeah, definitely, definitely a very, uh, very common thing to see uh, within pool players. Oh, while we're talking, I missed a break. Um, so I didn't actually see the break, but judging by the spread, it seemed to be um, pretty good. Hit very squarely. Uh, so on the break, you do want to aim to hit as square as possible with the cue ball and the rack to get that great spread. Um, Nila's gone for the... 11 ball, but it glanced by the 2 ball. Yeah, it does seem to make contact with 2 ball. However, that is not a foul yet because I believe it's still an open table. Yep. So Lucky is down. Playing the 13. Oh, where's it going? And it scratches. Oh, no, it doesn't. Oh, Lucky. Off both doors. <laughs> um, again, all calculated. As <laughs> all planned, as, um, as our esteemed uh, president of QSOC would say. And. I think he's got a very makeable shot on the 11. I think he's looking at the 10 as well. Sometimes uh, more experienced players, they'd opt for a slightly more difficult shot um, if it means a uh, better shot in the end, like better result in the end. So I think the 10 ball doesn't go from many angles. So he just so happens to get the right angle to make it go in. So I think they're gonna take that more now. Yeah, definitely, especially with the more experienced players, they like to take um, what we call big ball shots, that um, that even though it may have a bit of a risk, that it does get maximum get the maximum rewards in um, you know possibly winning the frame. Ooh, unfortunately, there is no reward there. Jackson's missed that. So Taz is back on the table. You know what I'd love to see? I'd love to see a run out this game. This yeah, definitely. Um, even with um, what you said in the past, that um, Taz and Nala, they were playing exceptionally well and ran you guys out um, during your frame. But it would definitely be a very exciting match because uh, from my personal experience at least, I have never seen um, in the finals uh, a run out with a mixed double comp. Because there are always uh, certain mistakes that players make that um, even if one player performs really well, the other might, player might accidentally miss a shot and that um, will be an opposing player's turn. Taz has missed the, the 15, I believe. Oh, sorry, might have been the 7. I'm not too sure if Lucky... Oh, he missed the 5 ball. Right, because it's solid. Yeah. Uh, Lucky's down <laughs> for, the, for the 9. <laughs> Ass. Plays it nicely with top. I'm not sure if he, uh, he's left much. They might have to take the 11 ball. Yep. It does seem that 11 could possibly make it in. Um, they've seen it as well. Um, yep, they might be going for 11 and afterwards get position for the 15. Yep, the 15 or the 14. Uh, the 11 ball opens a lot of opportunities. One problem I would dare say is the 12 balls behind the um, the uh, 2 or 3 and the 8, so that might be another uh, kind of worm for them to open. Yeah, we'll see how they deal with that one. Playing the... Lucky looked at the 10, I don't think he, he said he didn't go, which means it doesn't go. Um, playing for the 14 now. Definitely. Maybe draw it back for the 10 7. Oh, oh, where's it going? So oh no. But he didn't make it. And he pots the 14 oh, unintentionally. The wrong pocket. Yep, so yeah. with those shots, um, especially after um, calling the wrong pocket, um, you call a pocket and you don't make it to that pocket, um, it's not a foul, but it is the opposing, uh, opposing player's turn. And that's what, uh, what happens in a, a cold pocket shot game. Miller's missed a decently straightforward one more. So, let's see what Lucky's team does again. Doesn't seem to have many options. Um, all of his balls are tied up. His 15 doesn't go. He goes in the top right, but they don't have the angle for that. The 10 ball goes in the bottom left, but also doesn't have angle. And the, like Jason said earlier, the 13 is just completely trapped. Yeah, it is. It is stuck with a, a, cluster, a cluster of balls. Jackson's aiming for the 15 right now. Maybe the cut into the corner. Or maybe it's a safety. Oh, she goes to the cut and, and she it. pots it. What a shot! That great is a, shot. That is a great shot. Especially those shots with difficult shots, and you're faced with you're either forced to take it, or you might lose the frame. And what it's done actually is it's opened up the fourteen. Uh, sorry, the twelve ball a little bit. 
uh, she did kiss the two ball out of the way. So 14 does have a bank now. Lock is attempting it now. Plays a hard and it lands short. Good attempt regardless, uh, but another problem ball I would see as well is also the 10 ball. Um, unless you get proper position on angle and that, it will be a very difficult ball to pot in. It's the sixth ball right now. It's very straight. I think that's why it has us up to not to take it. Seems like looking at, uh, look, iron up possibly the four ball and um, either yep, adding a bit of draw to get position for a two or the six. Or the three. Yeah, any ball is really uh, available. That's what I love about nine ball, um, not nine ball, eight ball, because there's so much options. Um, you're not restricted on uh, what order you have to hit in, but instead um, the other color, uh, a, a stripe ball or a, um, a solid ball. So she's aiming for the two ball in the middle. If it were you, if it were you, Jason, well, oh, I think the three ball doesn't go in the middle actually. Off by the seven and the ten. Yeah, kind of. Oh, she goes for the two. Made the two and makes it. That's also a very wonderful shot. A very wonderful thin shot. Well. Break. No, it's not. Yeah. But it does roll. Taz checking the seven. We'll see by his facial expression if it goes. I think it does. Yeah. He's going. Oh, no, he's just going for a closer look. Yep. And he's eyeing up with um with help and Isla's Q um to look at the angle of where he wants to uh, make it in. So the problem here is not actually contacting the seven, but I think it's getting it past the eight ball. Um, yeah. He is going for the shot, so I'm assuming it does go. What a shot! Oh, what a wonderful shot! Greatly cued. Left uh, Nella the six ball in the top left. Yeah, you could definitely see the experience of the players, even though with those shots like that. Yep, a stop shot and now the three ball in the bottom right. Play with a bit of bottom left spin to come one rail, maybe two rails for the one and the five. Ooh. Positioning was there, but the shot was just a little bit off. But on the bright side, uh, oh no, never mind. On the bright it side, is. it has landed safe. It is quite a difficult shot, especially on a thin cut on the 12, and also um, the 8 ball is blocking the 10 ball, so it would be a, um, a very limiting shot on the options that she has to take. Really taking a good look at this. Um, this is one of the tournaments where I think some of some people have suggested to implement a shot clock because um, doubles is historically takes longer than singles tournaments because there is that like extra communication about with teamwork and stuff. Um, this time around we have opted for no shot clock because the the signups were low. So I think there were only seven teams I believe that signed up. Um, uh, I think one of our team didn't show up. And uh, yeah, actually one of the teams didn't show up, so it was a six team tournament. Um, Jacqueline's aiming for the 12 ball. I wonder if she's playing safe or she's going for the cut in the top right. Seems like she's going for the cut, possibly. Uh, she has a lot of balls to dodge to get position if she does make it. She's played for the safe. Um, it does look reasonable that Nala can pot the three and possibly even get the one and the five afterwards. Yep. But yeah, back on the um, shot clock. Yeah, so even I believe from right now, the snooker comp is still going and it is in the finals and it is 1-1 uh, one, one uh, tied. And it is a very long sport. Uh, but even on the context of um, shot clocks, um, I just think that you know players should take reasonable amount of time and um, should be in their own pace because definitely a shot clock can rush the environment and make a lot of shots that uh, you know um, wouldn't reasonably make uh, reasonably make sense. So Nilla's on the topic of rushing. I think Nilla's rushed the three ball there, uh, missed, and Lucky's and, uh, Lucky's made the ball and uh, gave position to Jacqueline. Twelve ball. It's a tough shot. Quite a decent amount of angle. Great she shot. makes it. Where's the white ball going? Oh, that's clear. She makes it very nicely. Um, 
It'll be the eight boy into the bottom right. Yep. That's who's aiming there now. Just pure shot making right now for Lucky. Yeah, it's definitely all the skills he's gonna need to pot this ball. And he pots it. And pots it. Very nicely. Center of the pocket. Very, very center. Not not even a left or right, just set straight in. So Lucky is probably one of the best shot makers in Kisok. And now we see a little celebratory dance and uh, a little thanks to um, our commentator Nick uh, for the uh, for the uh, commentation. <laughs> so yeah, one of the best shot makers. He's also one of the fastest players in Kisok. Um I would probably say the fastest that I know. Yeah, he's definitely you know runs out a lot of balls and uh, doesn't last a lot. Uh, doesn't last very long on the table, especially on how fast he runs the balls. So what we mean by fast player is um, <laughs> he, he doesn't take much time um, in between shots, thinking. So um, I think he knows what he's going to do very quickly and executes very quickly. He likes to get into rhythm, um, is what he's told me, which is why he does play at the speed he does. Yeah, not to toot his horn, but he is a very quick thinker. Um, I am currently playing nine ball league with him on our team called um, Money Shot, and um, yeah, he's definitely a very quick thinker, and also um, he prefers to take a shot. And uh, it seems like he has to re-rack the ball. And he's not happy with the rack that Jacklins gave him. Oh. Oh no. Oh no. Some tension in the team. The misses didn't make him happy. Um. How fast would you say you are, Jason, as a player? Um, personally, as a player, I would like, um, just even on each shot, I do actually like to consider like, my position and actually think of what um, the ball will go after next. So on average, I dare say I will take around possibly even 10 to 15 seconds for every shot. Um, that, you know, it's not just one shot, but it's what comes next and possibly um, thinking, it's just a bit like chess, thinking maybe even you know, two, three shots ahead. Lucky's break, the 14 is, oh, bumps into the 9, and makes it, so a non-try break, uh, he's not left Jackson with much though, we'll see. Yeah, quite an unfortunate position, um, very good break, but as again, um, you know, if you leave in poor position, it's very hard to pop the ball afterwards. But just, um, yeah, a little tips for our, uh, possibly our newer players. So after you put a ball in a break, you still have to um, call the ball you want to make for the next shot and pot that first before you actually start um, potting in order of the stripes and the solids. Yep, so it's not like the uh, the, the phone game, a ball <laughs> mini clip. pool mini clip, uh, where the, whichever ball you pot is the ball that you get assigned. So you do have to make another ball and get assigned. Yep. And if um, none of the players or either it's a dry break, um, what we like to call it is a call it open table. And that the you know the either the posing or the player that we plays still has to pot the ball before it's the decider. Jacking up for I'm not too sure what she was going for, maybe the three into the side. Caromed off of the thirteen. Uh, ambitious shot. Would have been amazing if we saw it. Definitely Light. very ambitious. We might even have to put a if she made that shot, we might have to put on our um, best shot compilation on YouTube. Um, yeah, definitely check out our YouTube channel if you're already on it. And uh, chuck us a like and a subscribe. <laughs> Hopefully. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> um, but uh, as uh, Jason said before, open table for Taz and Nilla. He's opting for the stripes, plays the 10 very nicely, leaves position for the 12. Uh, from this angle, I can't really tell, but I'm not too sure if the 13 is a problem ball or not. Oh, she does uh, seem to miss the 12. 12. Unfortunate. Small kiss on the 8 ball. We'll see if that hampers Lockie's uh, solids at all. It is currently um, 3 1 uh, Lockie and Jacqueline's way, so there's definitely a lot of stress off their shoulders right now yep. as um, Taz and Nala try to uh, uh, catch up onto the game. Lockie's played the 1. Don't think he called up. Did he, he caught that ball? Oh no, he did not call that the pocket. One into the, the 14. Uh, rail first. Uh, Carried into the other side pocket. Again, definitely intentional. Um, so, he's left them with a pocket hanger 14. I think he's opting to take it now. Fun fact uh, a lot of people think that uh, pocket hangers are like guaranteed and they should take it now. But oh, some where's it going? People, oh, as again, it hangs on the corner. Some people prefer to actually leave pocket hangers 
um, till a bit later on because of two reasons. I'll quickly go through here. First thing is um, it kind of like plays defense, so other the opponent obviously cannot play their ball into that pocket. Uh, it's only really a thing in eight ball though, but yep, um, plays defense. And also the other thing is is kind of also an insurance ball, so if they do happen to mess up position or mess up whatever they were intending uh, mo more than likely they will have a look on the pocket hanger that they left earlier and what that means is they can kind of reset their position by making that ball yeah definitely it's it's kind of like a gone for the four railer and missed just by hand and I, I believe that's a foul because she did not make any contact with uh, any of her um, designated balls before touching around yeah so Jacqueline's back on the table with ball in hand Playing the solids. Oh, yeah, something, something on the pocket hangers. Yeah, it's definitely something on assurance, and um, kind of in the way that I see it, it's a uh, get out of jail card. Especially if you get a very poor position and you're not left with any uh, makeable shots, you tend to take your pocket hangers and get out of the um, the lock uh, the locker that you played yourself in uh, to hopefully get you to a better position for the next shot. Playing the three ball right now. Smart move. Smart move. Follows a tiny bit forward for the seven. What yep. Lucky will do is probably force follow it. Is he going to send it? I'd like to use it. Uh, he's aiming low, maybe it's just drawing. Yep, draws back. For the 6 I believe, yep. Yeah, it's on a position yeah. 6. I'm not too sure. Oh, the 2 ball goes in the top oh, wow. right actually. Um, yep. I'm not sure if we're talking too loudly, so if the players can hear us. <laughs> uh, I think he... Yeah, I definitely Lucky thinks he heard us a bit. Yeah. Probably seen the video turn his head around uh, quite a few times. And that, that's a great pocket. Yeah, great pocket by Jacqueline. Okay, he's probably going to play the six ball now. Oh, it's, it's rare to see um, sometime Lucky using rest. Um, I, I think with a lot of players as well, including you, Nick, that um, uh, you guys like to use, do you guys like to use extensions over the um, rest sometimes? Yeah, so for like those longer reaching shots, at least for me, I can't really speak for other people. What oh, party going on in the background? But <laughs> Good I can't board. speak for other people. But for me, I really struggle with aiming with the mechanical bridge or some people call the rest. Also, some people call the the handicap stick. Or some people <laughs> well, um, even uh, non kind of terms the um the B stick. Yeah, but uh, the mechanical rest, I, I find it very difficult to aim and also play position properly. So I would usually always opt to use a extension. And what an extension is, is basically just a tiny piece of wood or plastic or uh, whatever the material your cue is. And it screws onto the bottom and just basically extends it by a couple of centimeters. Uh, just to make it a bit longer so that you can reach those longer balls. And, uh, unreachable shots and unreachable balls. Yep, um, that was a very great um, shot from Taz. Uh, he did make a combo and that was an excellent shot. And I see what shot Lana takes now. Yep, there's a lot of discussion again. That's what we love to see. A lot of communication and um, yeah, make sure the game's not one-sided. Seems like she's going for the 12. Possibly an attempt of a safety. Uh, not completely safe, Jack does have the 6 ball. As Lucky just shown her. There's also the 5 ball into the bottom left. It's a bit straighter, but it is a longer shot. Oh, another fun factor. Uh, fun point of discussion, do you prefer the closer shots with a bit more angle or do you prefer the longer shots with uh, less angle? Oh, that's yeah, definitely, definitely very difficult one sometimes. Just taking um, the six now. Yeah, so personally, actually, uh, more, before when I just started playing pool, obviously I do prefer the closer shots. But more recently that um, I've been able to cue more straight and uh, actually the, the long shots are actually quite um, fun, especially when I'm holding my hand on the rail. And um, yeah, definitely felt like, um, yeah, so right now, currently prefer the long shots. 
because you know it really shakes my expectation thinking in the past that wow I can never make these shots but now I could cue straight and still uh, make into the pocket I see I see very insightful Jason Lucky is taking one of those long shots that he talked about and um, I think it's clipped the 15 there so it's overcut it to the left Always oh, undercut I'm not too sure what angle he had. Um, Ties back on the table. Not an easy shot on the tour ball, but it should be going in. He's actually opting for the 13 ball, which does leave better position uh, afterwards. He can just uh, play a stuff roll, leave the tour ball into the middle. Just like that, so tour ball into the middle now for Nilla. We'll see what they do about the 15 ball. I think they're opting to play it into the top left. So a bit of draw. We'll see how well she can get into that cue ball. Oh she's just stunned it. Uh, left has a bit of a bit more angle. Yeah quite a long shot for 15 ball as well. So let's, let's see how he executes I'm this. not too sure how straight he is so if he's trying to hold the cue ball for the 8 ball into the side oh, Flying cue ball coming out Ooh. From the other tables That does happen Yeah, quite often, especially um, uh, the, on the uh, CDO tables that you know, There are a lot of other people as well so And um, some draw. other people tend to... Uh, let's see how makes shot He's playing draw here Ooh. He does manage to hold it, but he didn't make the shot And I think it's the 5 ball Straight forward 5 ball Not sure what he's gonna do with the four ball yeah it does seem the five ball make it to the corner pocket so let's let's see how um, they play this how, how do you play this Jason yeah so I would I would actually as as uh, as um, Lockley and Jacqueline pointed out I might actually try to play it safe even um, possibly you know bump the four uh, get out behind the eight um, to block the um, 15 off oh that's very very insightful actually because I was not looking at the safe at all I guess I'm a more aggressive player than others. She is opting to play the five ball as a safety. Okay, trick me a bit. Well. <laughs> um, very well Been played. Bamboozled. So only left the bank, which I don't think even goes into the top left. So I think they'd have to play the bank into the middle, which is very tough. Um, or they might actually attempt from the way um, Taz is pointing his cues, or possibly a double tap to try to get into the closer to the pocket. I think I think what they're trying to do is play the cue ball behind behind the five ball for a resafe. So they're gonna hit the fifteen on the left side, just like that. Play the resafe. The cue ball is kind of held. Uh, we we'll just have to see if it, they have a look on the four ball though. It does look like from uh, from angle at least that the four is open. Yeah, so, so lucky yeah. goes down the four ball. It is a stop shot, but he's on the rail, so it's a bit tough. He's probably gonna play this with quite a amount, of, quite a good amount of speed. He might try to force his way into the four into the pocket uh, to try to get position for the five as well. Yep. yep. So play that as predicted. With follow um, a little bit over. I wouldn't have personally played follow, but I think his. Good there. Yeah, it's definitely uh, the shot's also very potable, but uh, as again, it is um, less ideal compared to the shots um, that is straight. So Jackson is down for the five ball cut. I think she's gonna go one rail, maybe two for the eight point to the side. Very short. So he uses a second round, maybe even the third. Yep, just like that. And and um, don't know what Lockie's measuring there. <laughs> He's looking at the eight points to the top right. Uh, I dare say the wrong shot. So no, he's just playing into the middle. Yeah, straight and simple, yep. and he's possible uh, to it's get a four one, four one lead. So Jason, looks like your prediction is coming true. Yeah, and, um, yes again, um, a lot of players as well, uh, especially as pool players, we play on a lot of momentum. 
So once you start winning the crucial frames that you need, that um, you tend to keep performing well, and the opponent play, uh, opponent play may feel um, discouraged or a loss of morale, and that may um, you know cause a lot of um, uh, a lot of expected results from the game. Yep, and I think uh, that's a good example of what happened to me in the semi-finals. Um, we did lose four frames, I think three frames in a row, or four frames in a row. Um, and because of that, we weren't uh, playing the best as we would have, just because of the loss of morale. But as again, um, you know, especially in the unpredictability of um, Paul, it still could be possibly anyone's game. So in a, in a situation that Lockie or Jacqueline may actually scratch the eight, um, they may grant um, you know, Taz and Null a bit of breathing room to um, possibly come back for the game. Yeah, but yeah. Let's, let's see through this uh, rack, uh, rack that if it's the loss or it will be continued for the next. Jackson's breaking. She helps to break from the rail just like Lucky. And that does um, seem like a scratch. Ooh. And it is quite uh, dry as well. So it's still open for anyone to take. This rack is uh, looking very similar to the one two previous ago where we had a bunch of balls around the April. So we'll see how. Yep. As. Uh... Yep. So as Lockie has, think, uh, they're asking for someone to remove the magic cards. So, no, 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 no. so basically, oh, yeah. So as um, Lockie has pointed out now, um, in eight ball we have a rule that if you do, in case that uh, you scratch on a break, the uh, ball is in the white cue ball is instead pulled up behind the line, and you must shoot forward. So that prevents a lot of the, uh, you know, the very easy options to take and um, uh, to let the uh, opposing player run out the game. That being said, he plays a very easy shot, the five. Stop shot, um, leaving Nila the one ball. It is a little bit of a cluster in the middle, actually. So let's, let's see how they deal with that. Gets a kiss on the 13, and she's missing. Um, Lockie's turn on the table for shooting stripes. Eyeing up the 15-14 cluster. So I think it's trying to try play a combo. Or actually, if uh, any of our viewers are playing uh, sneaker players, what they call a plant. So, play that, does go in. Yep, and uh, just for new players as well. Um, yeah, so you can make contact with another ball, but as long as you call the right ball into the right pocket um, and you make it in, then that will be your designated ball. So, for example, um, Lockie called a 14 and it was stuck, stuck behind another ball. But he comboed that shot into the 14 and uh, made a 14 now his uh, now subsequently into stripes. Um, Jacqueline's eyeing up the 9 ball now. I think she's gonna go down the rail for the bottom right pocket. This is a very deceptive shot. Uh, the cut is very. Um, like. It's uh, what we call a blind cut because we can't actually see the pocket in our peripheral vision when we are down on the shot. Uh, yeah. And that does add a great deal of difficulty for the shot because you really can't judge if you're aiming in the right spot or not. Yeah, definitely. And a lot of our uh, mistakes and even errors uh, can be made through that shot. And that, uh, you know, sometimes may be very important um, regarding on how far you've got into the game. Let's see how um, Taz thinks about the shot. Yeah, so same with Taz, um, he is quite a new face, uh, we've only really started seeing him this year. But he's definitely a very uh, exceptional player that we've seen in our events. And we always love to see him in our events as well, especially in um, at our league games. Yep, so he's a very new face, but he's, a, as you can see, a very experienced player, making it to the finals. Um, what he has said is, he didn't actually know Q-Sock or anything pool related existed um, up until this year which is when he joined. And ever since joining, he's um, been a very active participant, played in basically all of our competitions, um, played in League. Um, and for those of you who don't know, League is a weekly tournament basically that we run. Lucky plays the Masse, I think. And he tries to draw us back, but unfortunately doesn't want point any balls. Very stylish shot. Uh, doesn't land to anything though. But as I was saying, uh, League is a weekly game where teams of three basically compete against each other. Uh, this one is fully handicapped, which means um, it's basically a fair playing field for everyone. 
Um, the better players are basically they gain less points when they win. Uh, this is worse players who gain a boosted amount of points when they win. And yep. what that means is each week it's really up, a toss up in the air as to which team will take the W. Yep, and the best part as well in our league games, there are handicap games as well. So a more experienced player with a higher, higher handicap level. And uh, most of the times, through that handicap um, would determine how much points each team gets. And that causes a lot more balance in, uh, throughout the team. So we, uh, we also have a multiplier that prevents um, uh, our three very good players, possibly all tens, to um, compete with each other by providing them a more of a point, uh, point to catch up on after playing the game. Yeah, so basically what Jason's saying is there's a maximum uh, amount of handicap, is what we call it, um, allowed in the team, which prevents uh, like three exceptional players or even two exceptional players from teaming up. And it basically just uh, makes it so every team essentially can consist of like good players but can't consist of many, multiple good players. Another thing as well, um, a league is not to be mistaken for the game, uh, popular game League of Legends. So yeah, just don't you know, currently uh, <laughs> stop spamming Yasuo mid or you know your S7s. Yep, absolutely. Jackson's missed a caught in the tall ball, so it's still a very close frame. This one, uh, both teams have many of their balls left on the table, solids and stripes. Taz is looking for a solid, uh, solid ball to hit. Um, I'm not too sure if he has too many options. Every one of his balls seem to be a very difficult shot or like they don't go into a pocket. So we'll see what he plays. Oh, he caught the four. Very difficult shot. As you can see, he has to bend over his other ball. He's good queuing for this one. Ooh, very close shot. Very close. Um, if that was the city tables, that would have popped. But as again with the build tables, there's less margin to error and are uh, quite small pockets and a lot more difficult to pop. Absolutely. So Lucky's back on the table with stripes. He's eyeing the 12 ball which I think goes into the bottom left pocket. If he does make this shot, it should be guaranteed position. Oh, it's played into the bottom right. Oh, oh where's the air going? And the eight oh, ball no. almost scratches. Luckily for Loki though, instead, um, that it's a solid ball hole behind the eight. So a uh, Loki may have um, possibly screwed uh, Nala and Taz over. <laughs> For those that don't know, uh, premature eight balls, so those that pot the eight ball before um, they clear up all their balls, uh, it's an immediate loss of game. Oh, sorry, loss of frame. So what this means is um, Taz and Nilla's four ball. I think at pretty much every angle that they hit at, I think it will knock the eight ball into the pocket. So very unfortunate. We'll see how they try to deal with this yep. um, and they're both very creative players so I'll definitely probably see something out of the box on how they can avoid the fall and possibly keep playing and force Loki to take a um, unconventional shot on the A and possibly scratch yeah what, what they probably need to do <laughs> is actually get ball in hand so they're gonna be trying to play more safeties um, because with ball in hand they can knock out the four ball also if the uh, cue ball is right next to four ball and sh he's shooting from oh, the left to the right. Oh, I think that's safe. Pretty much that. right where it is right now. Oh, actually a bit closer to the 4-8 eight, combo. Um, yeah. If he has the ball there, then he can actually rescue the 4-ball out of that area without losing the game. Yeah, and even right now, especially this frame, it's going to be very, very tense, um, considering it is 4-1, and also it could be anyone's game, considering the 8-ball is hanging on the pocket by uh, a strand over here. Yeah, it's a little bit of team talk from Lockie. <laughs> trying to yeah, possibly vote the eight and um, yeah, trying to look for the win of the game. <laughs> Not too sure what his plan is right now. 
don't believe the nine goes. Maybe it does. Nope, he's just gonna play the safety. Um, I think he's basically just trying not to lose and hoping that the other team loses for him. So very interesting last frame. Well, not necessarily last frame, but very interesting frame that we have here. Yeah, especially um, especially with four one, still be in this game. Um, you know, Tesla could come back and possibly even win the finals. They have a lot of balls left, so they can. Um, they have a lot of time until they're forced to deal with the four ball. How and would you? Ball. How would you deal with this, Nick? <laughs> this is very unfavorable condition. Uh, I'd I'd be constantly playing safeties. Safeties. Um, so I wouldn't be bothered potting any of the, the the three ball, one ball, seven ball, or six ball. I'd just be hoping that they do foul. And then the shot after that, I'd um, try to play a shot so that the four ball can you know, get out of there. Yeah, definitely I agree with you. And I definitely feel like um, right now it'll be a game of attrition. It'll be a battle of attrition. Um, that um, it's going to be a battle of safeties and it'll be a matter of who'll be pointing the eight ball um, out of turn first. Yep. Seems like has opted for the six ball. Because um, unfortunately missed it. But fortunately, gave them very safe uh, shot. Jacqueline doesn't have a shot on the nine board, I believe. Um, so she's going to hit the fifteen. I'm not too sure where she's aiming for. If it's a double or if it's just going to be a, a tap. Hopefully it's just not trying to cut in <laughs> to the corner because that may not be eight. Yep, so it's just going to roll up to 15. So like I said, uh, Lucky and Jacqueline are just going to wait until basically Taz and Nilla lose the game. And Taz and Nilla are going to be trying to force these two to make an error. Yeah, this is what we really call the battle of the wits. Uh, it's uh, almost like a technical battlefield or where um, you want to try to manipulate your opponent to um, take the shot that you don't want to. Very strategic. Yeah, even with Gannon Paul, um, it is a lot of um, strategy and um, thinking. Uh, and um, yeah, you know, you have to think a few shots ahead in order to win the game. So they play the safe on the one more. It just seems like it's a battle of safeties. <laughs> Lucky's gonna tap the 15, bank the 15, and he I don't know if he's it. caught it. He's caught he safe. has not caught it, so he's caught safe. Uh, Taz and Nilla are both back on the table. Six ball goes in, but if I were them, I wouldn't be trying to pot it. Yep, and there's another thing, in, uh, especially in pool as well, in eight ball. Um, once we call a safety, even though we make the ball, it is still the opponent, um, uh, opponent's turn because we got a safety. So that only applies in 8-ball actually, it doesn't apply in 9 and 10-ball. Ooh, it's getting closer to that um, very cluster on the left side of the table. Jacqueline, I'm assuming he's not going to go for the 9-ball. Uh, instead, if I were her, I'd play the... Just roll onto the 11 very softly and try to buy more time. Yeah, definitely in this frame, I don't believe we'll be seeing a lot of um, a lot of uh, very high power violent shots as well because um, the unpredictability of those shots can knock the eight ball in and cause a loss of frame. Yeah, so just the risk of um, a random ball going <coughs> up somewhere and tapping that eight ball in. Both teams are trying to avoid it. Or that yeah. they can. Yeah, it's like a little bit of a dark hole there. Um, if your ball gets there, <laughs> you're one step closer to possibly losing the game. Ooh, I just had a really interesting thought. Um, if Taz and Nilla were to actually play intentional foul and move one of Lockie's or Jacqueline's balls closer to the 4-8, then 
then um, it could get really interesting because then both teams would be at a disadvantage. Yeah, definitely. That's actually a very good um, strategic move um, that, you know, you either you could feign a retreat in a way, a feign a retreat to, you know, win the wall in a way. So they may um, take an intentional foul to possibly force Jacqueline and Lockie to take a very, very unfavorable shot. Yeah. So, oh, where's oh, the ball going? The going close, oh. though. It's not going to touch anything. Good save. That's exactly what it is. It's actually, is. I think, exactly what he was going for because now that the cue ball is stuck behind the 11, Jacqueline is forced to shoot it towards the, the eight ball. And so when you're shooting towards the eight ball, anything could happen. Yeah, let's, let's see how she plays this. The cue ball might nick the three and the three might go and hit the four and eight. Yep, but she's played it very softly. I don't think that's foul. No, it's not. Yep. And I believe Taz and Allah has advantage of that. Um, there are options of uh, other options on the table as well. For example, the one and the six. Yep. But on the other hand, um, Jacqueline and Lockie only has uh, the, the 11 shot. Yep. And now that it is closer to the four and the eight, um, they don't necessarily have an easy shot. So, here's <laughs> safety is <laughs> happening now. <laughs> Yes, it really is the battle of the wits. The two generals uh, versus the non-two so generals. Lucky, I think, is caught the safe, but he's going to go for the pot, the bank. Uh, but what he's actually done is he's tied up the 11 even more. Yes, he's he shot himself in the foot, as we like to say. <laughs> he tied up the 11 even more. Yeah, now. he didn't want to do that. The look on his face doesn't look like a happy man. So... This is very good news for Taz and Miller. Yeah, definitely a very second win that they could still win the game. They just need to play very strategically and very smart. And indeed... He's played an amazing safety. And indeed, Taz's experience I has think forced the them six to take. I hides the 11 from direct contact. A referee going over just to check if the 11 was on the rail what that means is that if she touches the 11 ball and it does hit the rail it won't be a foul but if it is already on the rail then another ball needs to hit another rail yeah it definitely is going to matter what speed and possibly even spin that she plays so she's playing it really rolls. lightly is it going to be touching off? no Indeed. it's the 11 very well done actually that was that, the, the speed control applied for that is um, quite amazing and also the the trust in the table as they yeah, say yeah definitely especially on these tables um, there's a lot of ta table roll as we like to call they're not always um, flat yes that as well so um, because obviously this is a public pool hall so not everyone appreciates the tables as much and so some wear and tear damage does occur yeah there's a lot of um, sometimes uh, players unfortunately hit the table as well so that might cause a dent and um, if the ball makes uh, rolls on the dent it may go in the misdirection yep so it seems like the general plan for Nala and Taz right now is that they try not to um, actually pot the balls because once they pot the balls they are um, that's one option less to escape it's gone safe for Lucky so he's actually gonna kick what the kick means is that there's more risk of not hitting the ball. And that hit. Lockie calls a foul. That was a foul. It seems that the foul. 11 ball was touching the rail. Yep. And that um, in turn means that there was no contact made after um, hitting the strike ball. And so that what, was indeed a foul. So what Taz is uh, doing is he's putting the ball where I was describing earlier, right next to the 8 ball, <laughs> to try and very a lot of excitement in her within our players <laughs> so Taz is gonna try and hit the four ball on the very side oh. and try to get it out of the way without touching the eight ball it's a very tricky shot very finicky but it's the only chance he's got this is it's make and break oh <laughs> so I don't know what he's break, done there he's knocked the table on this table so okay so, okay I believe he hasn't touched any balls yeah okay okay okay. a little bit of our pre nerve stress possibly okay, okay. Hit the table Let, let's see what, he, what happens here Great shot, great shot from Taz. Great shot, so he's rescued the four ball. Um, now he's got to do the same for the three ball. So what they're going to need is uh, another great foul uh, coming from Lockie. It's another great safety. And unfortunately for Lockie and Jacqueline, they can't really safety 
has Anila because they have 70 boards on the other side uh, the other side of the table. Yep. And that's just to reflect from before, that's why they um, refused to pot it and instead playing safeties over and over again to um, leave them more options to escape um, any safeties that any safety attempt Jacqueline and Lucky plays. What's really fantastic here is that the three ball and the lone ball are so close that it's forcing Jacqueline and Lucky to only hit the 11 ball like head on and what that is doing is it's just double kissing and staying in the exact same spot so it's stayed in the same spot for like three rotations now yeah definitely and the ball's been um yeah so that's the problem that uh jacqueline and Lockie has to solve is to try to get that ball uh, this is, this is a wonderful three. last uh not necessarily last again but wonderful frame to, to yeah to very very finals. wonderful close frame as well it's yeah. very very exciting to see how see lucky does he might be able to rescue players. the ball nope double kiss again Wow, just the, the world of double kisses today. Yeah. <laughs> I wonder if um, Taz and Nilla are going to try to pop a couple more balls because um, now that they have rescued the four ball out, they all they, uh, they only need um, yep. uh, like only the three ball out. and so Good move from Taz, um, getting more distance and also putting the white ball near the rail to force Jack and other to make a very hard shot or a, a very horrible mistake. So I wonder if that's Nukud. I think it is because Jacqueline's looking at the the kick. If she hits a, if she overhits her, it's gonna scratch on the eight, I believe. Or if she misses completely and hits the three, also might. Oh, oh, uh, actually, you know what? She's intentional. Intentional foul. So very interesting. Um, what well, I think they haven't calculated is that with the intentional foul, Taz and Nila do have the opportunity to get the three ball out. Yeah, but and I then think potentially um, run the rack. Yeah, potentially run a rack, but also there's a lot of danger. But it's, um, it's a very kid or miss because what doing getting the three ball out would also mean that Lucky and Jacqueline will get the their, their ball out as yeah, well. Yeah, and freeze them, uh, freeze the freeze the eleven ball out of the cluster. So they might actually in instead attempt to so play the other balls. What I would do actually, if I were Taz and Nilla, is I would uh, put a couple of my balls. Let's say the one ball and the four ball because they're more difficult. Um, but then keep playing. Oh, actually, I'll put the one ball and the six ball, and then I keep playing safeties once again, but only on the four ball. Yes. Yeah, as again, a battle of attrition, you know, oh, does seems like they're trying to either play safety or maybe even get a three ball out of the way to run. So they're going to get the three ball out of the way. What they need is a really good cue ball so that the 11 ball doesn't have a pocket. No, they played another safe actually. Very great safety, I, I believe. It is possibly sticking to the ball. So, <laughs> there's now some distance between the 11 and the 3. Yeah, it's a remark that um, Lockie was like, didn't want to jump it because, of course, here, it's very impossible to jump the ball from that distance. Um, so now that there is distance between the 11 and the 3, uh, whichever team plays the better breakout shot for their respective ball will probably win this frame. I believe that's a foul. So Lockie's missed the 11, so what that means is Taz might have an option to get his 3 ball out of the way and safely. We'll see what he tries to do. Let's see what the mastermind has in plan. This is very exciting, Jason. Yeah, it? it's, I dare say, one of our most exciting matches recently as well in this year. Yeah. Considering the amount of, um, yeah, because even the average time per frame, I dare say, would be around 10, 15 minutes. But this has gone around for quite a long time, possibly even 20 or 30 minutes. Yeah. So, sorry for the viewers who are getting bored because there's not much happening, but oh, it's definitely the, the, exciting. Strategic, the strategic element is, I think, very exciting. Um, yeah, he goes for the goes one for ball. The one. To either, either go for the six, and possibly even play safety on four to force them for another shot. So, yep. <laughs> Should play the six if I were Nila. And then afterwards, I'd try to play another safe, I believe. Yeah. The problem now is that it's very easy to hit the, make contact with the 11 ball. So... If they don't play the safety correctly, it's gonna be very awkward uh, because what could happen is the three ball could be remain stuck, but the eleven ball could be out. Yeah, another thing as well from what I saw, um, possibly what they might plan is um, from the viewer or the um, the phone at least and the recorder that on the they wanna play the ball to the left side of the table to either force them to take that shot up towards the eight ball or even maybe even another um, inducing safety that they have to put themselves into. So Taz has gone for the four ball, so clearing out his remaining boards. 
when he makes it. He's sure. gone really close to a three wall, which is very good for playing safe. Um, you get a lot more precision when you're closer. Yep. And this will be the, uh, possibly the defining factor of this game. Um, each team is on one ball remaining, so let's see how to play this. Uh, Jason, if you could really quickly check for me, is the three ball on the rail? The uh, three ball is not on rail. No, none of the balls on the rail right now. So um, yeah, we'll just see how to take a shot. So Nilla needs to have an extremely precise cue ball. <coughs> I think the plan is to hit it on the left side of the three at a very, very, very light speed. And what I'll do is uh, just move the three ball closer to the eleven, snooker, and also have the cue ball behind that. Uh, the risk though is that um, the cue ball could run into the eight ball and sink it. So, and it does seem like a foul, foul, unfortunately. Too light, too light, and it fouls. So, it's Jacqueline's shot now. And uh, an opportunity for Team Loki to clear up the table and take the win today. We'll Let's see. see. Yeah, foul. We'll see what they do. Once again, you know, anything could happen. Uh, Loki's trying to give his expertise. But it is an angle that Jacqueline does look hesitant to take. And we have seen a little bit of celebration behind, and uh, they might be celebrating the shot that'll be here to come. Uh, um, while there is ball in hand, this is the only angle, unfortunately, that is available for Jacqueline. Or well, at least the the easiest angle that's available. So, he's going for the shot now. And it's a wonderful very great shot, and I think very that may well be done. the end of the game with Lockie so, at the 8. Lockie on the 8 ball for miss. the win for Mixed Doubles 2022 Term 2 competition. Team Lucky and Jacqueline take the win over Kaz and Nilla. And uh, they are the winners. Five one. Congratulations to Jacqueline and Lucky. And also a very well, very entertaining match between the two. So congrats to Kaz uh, and Nilla for making it this far. That was a very entertaining last frame and a very entertaining uh, race altogether. Jason, yeah, that was very, very entertaining. And um, yeah, as again, it, w it looks like it could be anyone's game, especially with that eight ball. Um, there were some uh, some missteps and a very good um, uh, strategy to play. But end of the day, um, you know, Lockie's experience and Jacqueline's um, experience as well uh, came ahead and they did win the game. But on the other uh, opposite spectrum, um, yeah, Taz and Nala played very well as well and they definitely executed perfectly on what they had. So just really quickly, uh, thanking our sponsors, we have City Heroes, obviously providing the lovely venue, and also Arc from uh, UNSW uh, to keep us uh, running. Um, Arc, please keep giving us money. Um, <laughs> we, are, we, are, we need it for events. <laughs> so just to really quickly run down the prizes, uh, the winners I think are winning a gift card. I'm not too sure the value of it yet. And they also have a lovely trophy. Um, some hoodies, uh, obviously QSOC proprietary winner hoodie um, that everyone's trying to, to get their hands on. Yeah, and I think Lockie's won uh, quite a few ho hoodies already, and um, you probably won't be able to see it from camera, but uh, Nick is is flexing his um, Term 1 uh, League hoodie that he's won for minors and for the finalists. So congratulations, Nick, as well on that. <laughs> oh, thank you. So let's, I, let's, hope, event, um, thank you, thank you. let's hope Team Daddy Nick for Nine Ball League <laughs> wins, uh, wins the second, second dump. And then uh, for Taz and Nilla, they also get a gift card and also they are entitled to QSOC merch when it does arrive. So I think it's uh, the current plan is we're going to be buying some water bottles, but Ooh. there's a chance that it could be uh, tote bags as well, or lanyards, or, or hats, or bucket hats, or whatever we see uh, up on the market. Soon, coming soon, TM. I would love to see a uh, Kisok bucket hat possibly competing with the uh, iconic Akira bucket hat. And you know, you might even see them uh, represented at raves or even, you know, at uh, the knockouts, which is coming soon. <laughs> Absolutely. And uh, also, really quickly, just to shout out our upcoming events uh, while Taz is taking the camera off. <laughs> oh no, where are we? Um, our upcoming events, we have a social pool this next coming weekend, uh, as well as I think the biggest event of QSOC every year, into uni Yes, our flagship event for Inter uni flagship is coming event. up. Um, so yep, so that's what that is, is a uni university versus university event um, where teams of like basically 
teams of different universities field uh, their best players, and um, we they compete in a in a day event uh, where it is again handicapped, but also it is the best of the best. Yep. So we see the the cream of our top of um, our players, and it'll be a definitely very exciting match um, with all the experience you know, experiences clashing together, and um, we'll see if uh, other UNSW might even take another win, or even maybe if you said take his first win um, in in history in the finals. So it'll be definitely a very uh, exciting match to look forward to. Well, maybe Macquarie can uh, get a win again after a very very long time. I think they won in twenty seventeen. But correct me if I'm wrong. Yeah. And yeah, I definitely feel like um, Mukori actually has a good chance as well, um, especially with um, players like Hassim, uh, Daniel, uh, Valix as well, and also even um, possibly Michael Su, our first year's winners. Yep. So it'll be definitely a very exciting and balanced team to see um, yeah, anyone take the, the, the win yep. for Inter-Uni. So, and also to end off our term, we'll have another competition, Is it's going to be Scotch Nine more. So once again, another doubles competition, but this time it won't be... Uh, there won't be the requirement of having a mixed gender, so we'll see how that t- uh, tournament ends. That's going to be the very last event, um, the 6th of August, so excited to see everyone there. And um, yep, this has been Nick and Jason. Yep, and uh, thanks for listening to us meme throughout the uh, match, and I hope you enjoy this, uh, this session. Alright, cool. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Yeah, thanks for having us. Like and subscribe. <laughs>